Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at the rectangular coordinate system, also known as the Cartesian coordinate system, named after René Descartes, a French mathematician and philosopher. Let's get started. All right, if we look at a number line, and we make the positive and negative numbers, we'll say this is the positive side, one, two, three, four, and so on, and negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on, we just are looking at one dimension. If we want to talk about two dimensions, we want to also say how much something moves up and down, we need another one. So we can make one starting here at zero. We can make another number line. And likewise, since it's moving up, we'll say that this is one, two, three, all the way up. So we have the positive numbers here and the negative numbers going down. Okay, so here we just made two axes. We have the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, and where they meet, this is called the origin. Alright, notice that our coordinate system has broken our plane, okay, in this case my board, into four parts. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, and we name these parts using the Roman numerals. This is our first quadrant. Quadrant means four. So first quadrant, second quadrant, third, and our fourth quadrant. Alright. Now, how do I say that I'm talking about point one three compared to, let's say, three one? Which of these numbers do I say first? Do I say my x-axis or my y-axis first? Well, we've agreed to use ordered pairs such that ordered pairs given by x and then your y. Remember, this was my x-axis, so if I'm talking about this point, I look at my x-axis first, and starting from the origin, okay, I notice that it's one positive, so this coordinate is one, and it's three up. So my y-coordinate tells me to go up or down, since it's up, it's going to be a positive three. And notice how it differs from this coordinate. This coordinate goes three to the right, and one up. All right, I've made one point in each quadrant. Now in general, in my first quadrant, I can say that any point here is gonna have a positive x and a positive y. Any point in my second quadrant is gonna have a negative x but a positive y. Any point in my third is gonna be negative x, negative y. And any point in my fourth is gonna be positive x with a negative y. All right, one of the main things here is using our distance formula to find out how far away two points are. So the distance between two points is given by the square root of, okay, the subtraction of their x's squared plus the subtraction of their y's squared. Okay, notice that the two points have their own ordered pairs, okay, and that's what we'll be substituting inside. All right, let's go ahead and let P1 be 1, 3, and P2 is 5, 6. Let's find out how far away these points are. All we're doing is substituting in here. Now, what I like to do is I like to write x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y, and since this is point 1, I'm going to make this 1, 1, and this one will be 2, 2. Technically, it doesn't matter which one you make which. Uh, since everything gets squared, uh, it doesn't matter if you end up getting a negative in there. Um, but I'll just keep these in order. So, my substitution looks like this. Is equal to the square root of 5 minus 1 squared plus 6 minus 3 squared. Okay, I'm going to take care of my parentheses first. That's 4 squared plus 3 squared, 16 plus 9 
that's the square root of 25, which is 5. So we know that these two points are 5 units away from each other. Alright, let's try this one out before I give you some to try. Um, let's see, x, y, x, y, 1, 1, 2, 2. So my substitution will look as follows. 3 minus negative 4 squared plus 2 minus 5 squared. That is 7 squared plus negative 3 squared. So that's 49 plus 9, which is the square root of 58, which is about 7.62. Okay, so you can get decimals here, so don't let that scare you off. This is the right answer. All right, you have two problems here. Go ahead and pause the video and try these out. I'm gonna show you the answer in three, two, one. All right, here are your answers. I hope you got them right. All right, now we'll be looking at the midpoint formula. Okay, our midpoint formula is, the midpoint is gonna be x, y and it's given to us by doing this. Now notice that it's the midpoint, so it's a coordinate point. Okay, that means I need an ordered pair. You need an x and you need a y. So you need an x and you need a y. Now how do we get those new x's and y's? Notice that here you're gonna be taking the average of two numbers. Here, to get the x, you're gonna be taking the average of the two x's. To get the y, you're gonna get the average of the two y's. Let's see if we can see it a little bit better here. Here I gave you x1, y1, and x2, y2. If I'm asking for the midpoint between these two points, then if you kind of eyeball it, you know that it's somewhere around here. Using this, this is what you're gonna be doing. To get the x coordinate, to know exactly how far to the left or to the right this midpoint is, you're gonna be getting your average, so exactly between here, okay, and here, you find the middle. And then you do the same thing for the y coordinate. You're looking at your y1 and your y2, which is all the way up here, and you find the middle, okay? And that lets us know exactly where our midpoint is. Now we don't obviously guess it like that. We're gonna be using the formula. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, here I'm given these two points and I wanna find out exactly what is in the middle of these two points. So I'll use my midpoint formula. What I like to do is I like to get just my X first and then uh, just my Y. If you wanna do them both at the same time, that's up to you. For me though, this is what I'm gonna do. I'll get my X, which I know is given to me by X1 plus X2 over two. I'll just go ahead and substitute, so that is negative 5 plus 3 over 2. That's negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So I already have my x coordinate. Now I'll get my y coordinate, y1 plus y2 over 2. And here I have 3 plus 1 over 2, 4 over 2, so it's 2. So now I have both coordinates, my midpoint is at negative one, two, there. All right, go ahead and try these two questions out, pause the video, and I'll show you the answers in three, two, one. All right, here are your answers. I hope you got them right. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to see a distance and midpoint formula proves okay why they are the way that they are go ahead and click here and that's all for today until next time